So in this example, we're going to try to find the area under the curve square root of x cubed plus 2 on the interval from 1 to 4. Um, now, the directions here ask us to approximate this. Now, you might look at that and say, why would I want to approximate that? I already know how to find the exact area under the curve. Uh, we know the fundamental theorem of calculus. It's a great, great theorem that's uh, really helpful for finding the exact area under a function. Um, so if you went that route or if you thought you could do that, uh, you look at this guy and you say, okay, if I can find his antiderivative, I'll plug in 1 and 4 and subtract, and then that'll be my answer. So you start down that path, you start down that road, uh, you ask yourself, how would I integrate this? Um, the only thing that even remotely seems possible is like a U substitution you know, type of approach. And so if your U was you know, X cubed plus 2, as we would likely let it be, then the DU would be 3X squared DX. Now, this is somewhat nice because you'd have the square root of U. That seems appealing. But notice you don't have anything else outside of here. In other words, you can't fashion a du. We need 3x squared dx, but all we have is a dx. Um, now, you could fix the 3, you know, the, the trick where you put a 3 on the inside and a 1 third on the outside, but there's no way to fix that x squared, unfortunately. And I have no tricks up my sleeve to help us do that either. It's just we're, we're not going to be able to integrate this guy. So that, that basically causes us a roadblock as far as the fundamental theorem of calculus goes. So in other words, we have to use an approximation. So we're going to approximate this area um, using trapezoids. This is uh, a trapezoidal rule exercise that we're going to attempt. And these trapezoids are going to give us a fantastic approximation, as, uh, as we'll quickly see. Okay, so um, here's that curve, um, the square root of x cubed plus 2. Um, and so this is the trapezoidal rule from the last video. So you'll recall um, b minus a is the length of the interval. N is the number of trapezoids we have, and then you have these um, uh, varying heights, these f of x of 0, x of 1, so on and so forth throughout the interval. So let, let's partition this guy to begin with into six pieces. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 eventual trapezoids. So I'll just do this as quickly as I can here. Okay, so here's our six trapezoids. Now, it's even it's kind of hard to even see the tops of these trapezoids because they follow the curve. And uh, at a given x value, the right endpoint of one trapezoid is the same as the left endpoint of the next trapezoid. So we see we get practically no error involved. This approximation I'm anticipating is going to be really, really good. Now, what are these x's here? Well, the first, your starting x value is x sub 0. Then you have x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, 4, x sub 5. And then x sub 6 would be, your, with uh, corresponding to your 6 trapezoid, the right end point uh, of that 6 trapezoid there. And so um, let's see if we can figure out the width of each of these trapezoids. The delta x, the width of each trapezoid, we had a little formula for it back when we did Riemann sums. It was b minus a over n. And that's pretty intuitive. What, what this is, is taking 4 minus 1, 4 minus 1, it gives you a, an interval length of 3, and chopping it into 6 pieces. So each of these will be, let's see, we have 4 minus 1 over 6. That's 3 over 6, or a half. So each of these guys is half a unit wide. So um, just to quickly jot these down, x sub 0 is 1 x sub 1 is 1.5, is half a unit farther, that's this x value, then x sub 2 is 2, then x sub 3, 4, 5, and 6, I don't think I'll write the rest of them, but yeah, you would just continually go up in increments of a half, and then x sub 6 would be 4, that's your, your final x value there. Okay, so um, basically we just have to plug these in, and, uh, and then this should give us our our area here. Now, if you're looking at this and asking yourself, how does that give you the area of a trapezoid? Well, that's not something that we're covering in this video. If you watch the video previous to this one, that's the video where we explain really where this formula comes from and whatnot. So we're just basically using it uh, right this second. Okay, so here we go. The area would be, um, we'd have b minus a over 2n for this coefficient. And so we would actually have not a half, but a fourth. We'd have a fourth. 
All right, and then we would have f of x sub 0, so that's f of 1, and then we'd have 2 f of x sub 1, the next x value, which is half a unit farther down the road, so 1.5, and then 2, 2, 2, 2 is all the coefficients in the middle. If you recall from the last video, we, we paid careful attention to these coefficients. The first coefficient is 1, and the middle coefficients are all 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and the last coefficient is 1. And the reason that is, just very briefly, is because the leftmost endpoint is only used one time, but every endpoint in the middle is actually the right endpoint of one trapezoid and the left endpoint of the next trapezoid. So the ones in the middle all have a coefficient of 2, and then the right endpoint, the very right endpoint, has a coefficient of 1 again. Okay, um, so let's keep on going. So 2 times f of 2 plus 2 times f of 2.5 plus 2 times f of 3 plus 2 times f of 3.5. And last one is f of 4, but I'm not going to double that one. It's just f of 4. Okay, so if I can compute this stuff, I'll have my area. Now, I guess one question right off the bat is, how do you get all of these things like f of 1.5, f of 2, f of 2.5, and whatnot? Well, you'll recall uh, we were given f. f. This this is our function that we're trying to find the area under. So it's understood that this is f of x. So when I want f of 1, f of 1, uh, then I'm going to plug 1 in for x. Not in the integral. I'm just talking about this function here is just the square root of x cubed plus 2. It's your integrand. So f of 1 would be the square root of 3, 1 plus 2. So, um, so that's how we get all of these function values in the middle. And uh, to save us some time, I actually went ahead and did this. Um, the easiest way I would suggest doing this is to take your TI calculator, and if you enter in your function like as if you were going to graph it like so, um, like here I have the uh, square root of x cubed plus 2. Um, rather than manually typing all these points plugged in on the home screen, I would just go to second table and then enter in all your x values and it'll spit out immediately what the y values are. So you can see what I did here. Plugged in a 1, I got 1.372. Plugged in 1.5 and 2 and 2.5 and 3 and 3.5 and 4 and just basically got these values. So um, I know I did that kind of quickly. You can pause the video and check check those values uh, if you'd like to, but um, but nevertheless, there, there they are. So if we total this, we're done. We're done. So um, again, to save a little bit of time, I went ahead and totaled those up in my calculator. Just quickly calculator punched them. Again, don't forget to multiply some of these terms by 2. Other terms you don't have to multiply by 2. Oh, and also don't forget this 1 fourth, this on the outside as well. Okay, but nevertheless, total all those up, and to save us a little time, I got 13.27. 13.27. Uh, this is an approximation to this area under the curve. So the integral from 1 to 4, the exact area, should be really close to about 13.27, and very, very little error because these trapezoids follow the curve. All right now, to convince you that this really was a good approximation, what I also did was um, I went ahead and found this exact area on my calculator. And so the exact area I found to be 13.302 rounded. And so the exact area, look how fantastic this approximation is. It's hard to stress um, just how good this approximation is. Um, and you know, until you see uh, an example like this, we're getting practically the exact area um, using only a mere six rectangles. Six rectangles is nothing. Um, you know, just imagine if we had used even twelve rectangles or something. Uh, is so so accurate here um, to to approximate the area under these curves. So um, hopefully that helps you solidify in your mind the idea of the trapezoidal rule. And uh, just just to repeat one last time, the the time that we use the trapezoidal rule is when we're giving a def when we're given a definite integral that you can't find an antiderivative for. So when the fundamental theorem of calculus breaks down because you can't find an antiderivative 
to plug in your B and plug in your A and subtract, uh, this is a good fallback technique that will still get you close to that definite integral.